All right, everybody, here goes a video on how we apply right tri triangle trigonometry to application word problems. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, there are 10 different word problems for you to practice on these notes, but I'm only going to cover a couple of them. First thing, though, we have to talk a little bit about angle of elevation and angle of depression. So, Elevation, we know, is going up. Depression, no, we're going down. But that's all based on your original line of sight. So here you are just walking along, and normally you're looking straight ahead. Unless, of course, you're checking your cell phone or you find something down on the ground, which is actually an angle of depression. Um, so basically, we always start by looking straight ahead. Now, an angle of depression occurs when you look down from your original line of sight. So that would be an angle of depression, okay? So like I said, maybe you found a dollar on the ground or you're checking your phone to see what kind of text messages you have or whatever gives you a reason to look down. From your original line of sight, looking straight ahead to something that's below you is an angle of depression. Angle of elevation is when you look up. So you're walking along outside and you see a bird flying overhead or you see an airplane or a hot air balloon or something, which causes you to look up. From your original line of sight, an angle going up is known as your angle of elevation. Okay, so this is your angle of elevation, and this guy down here is your angle of depression. It is very important that you understand that because you are going to run across that vocabulary in a lot of word problems. So, like I said, there are 10 different examples, and I'm probably only going to pick out three because the purpose of this video is not to tell you which buttons to push in the calculator and how to set up problems anymore. Um, the most important thing about this video is going to be can you draw the correct picture? Now, you don't have to get fancy. I mean, you can if you want to. It's actually kind of fun sometimes. So a person is in a 21-foot tall lighthouse. Boom. Draw a lighthouse. Doesn't have to be perfect. Or you can just draw a stick. It doesn't matter. Um, and you see a boat in the distance. Next piece, got some water, and you draw a little boat. Um, or, there's your boat out here. You have an angle of depression of 30 degrees. How far is this ship from the lighthouse? So, you got this person standing in this lighthouse, you know, and uh, he spots a boat in the distance, and the angle of depression is 30 degrees. How far is the ship from the lighthouse? So, there's your right triangle if you want to draw it that way. And of course, here's your right angle because we're assuming that height is always, you know, vertical. Uh, so we got this guy looking and here's his line of sight. The question is, where does the 30 go? I'm going to tell you right now, the most popular mistake is people put a 30 up here. You have to remember what I said in the pregame section is this is always based on original line of sight. So this guy was originally looking straight ahead. And then he's like, oh, look, check it out. There's a boat down there. And he then looks down. The 30 actually goes outside of what you would think is your triangle. Okay, this is your original line of sight. Your 30 goes out there. But that, how does that help you? Well, of course, horizontal lines are always parallel, and we have these things known as alternate interior angles, so the 30 actually goes down here. Um, now, it is totally fine for you to draw triangles upside down. You can use a triangle that looks like this. It's going to give you the exact same answer because the top's going to be the same as the bottom. Um, that's just one of the things. Angle of depression sometimes gives people a hard time. Angle of elevation is usually pretty simple. Okay? Now, from there... All you have to do is put in all of your known information. So we know the lighthouse is 21 feet tall. We know that the angle of depression is 30 degrees, which we're going to put down here. And then it says, how far is a ship from the lighthouse? Well, that's going to be down at the bottom because boats cannot fly. So 
this boat just needs to travel this way to get to the lighthouse, so the X actually goes on the bottom. And as I mentioned earlier, the purpose of this video is not to show you what to type in the calculator anymore. Now we assume you know how to do that. So we have our angle, we have an opposite side, and we have an adjacent side. To solve this problem, we're just going to use the tangent of 30 degrees that is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And then we just type it in our calculator, and we are going to end up with 36.4 feet. Always remember to attach a label to your word problem answers. Okay, that's just doing 21 divided by the tangent of 30, and you are good to go. All right, so that's the first example that I wanted to do with you. Um, another example that we'll do is number four. Okay, because it uses an angle of elevation. So what we're going to do here is, again, set up a picture. Now you can draw something fancy if you'd like to. Um, so we're going to see a space shuttle launch. So of course we've got to have a space shuttle with maybe some flames or something. Um, and we see that the observer is five kilometers away. Okay. And uh, so then instruments say that it is two kilometers above the ground by now. So now you already have enough information. You know the space shuttle is two kilometers above the ground. The observer is five kilometers away. This time we're asking for what the angle of elevation is. Now remember, angle of elevation is always based on the original line of sight and then looking up. So angle of elevation is a little bit easier than angle of depression because most of the time it's going to be set up exactly how you have your picture drawn, unless you draw your triangles upside down. Um, so there you go. So again, we have an opposite and adjacent, so that's going to be another tangent problem. And this time we're looking for x. We are going to be equal to the opposite over adjacent. And remember, using your calculator, it's just an inverse trig. So that means you're going to have to use the inverse tangent of both sides to get rid of the tangent. And you're going to find out that the angle is 21.8 degrees. Um, now, when you're working with word problems, a lot of times you can use a little bit of common sense, okay? I mean, if you're standing five miles away from something that's only two miles tall or kilometers, um, you don't have to look up as high as, say, you were much closer. Then you'd have to look up much further. Um, so 21.8 degrees makes sense. All right, so there's two. We did one where you have to find a side, one where you have to find an angle. The last one I want to talk about is let's say number eight. And the reason I want to talk about number eight is because this is a two-step problem. Um, well, not really a two-step problem, but there's a little bit of a twist. Um, so this time you have a balloon on 140 feet of string, making a 70 degree angle with the ground. So we have our balloon, and it's on 70 feet of string, which is making a 70 degree angle with the ground. How high is the balloon if the person holding it is holding it six feet above the ground? So, again, we're going to find x, which is the height. So we're going to do the sine of 70 is equal to x over 140. And we're going to find that that x is equal to 131.6 feet. But we have to add the six feet for the person who's holding their hand six feet above the ground. So the actual height is 137.6 feet. Okay, that's one where there's a little twist to the problem. All right, so the rest of these are extra practice for you. Go ahead and try some of them on your own, and we can talk about them later. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.